so convenient for and that is a little bit too restrictive for that. For example, setting up uh, a, a simulation network uh, uh, from some, some topology. So there are normally there are two ways that people do it, either generating a net file or doing it from C++, but both of them are, are uh, not so nice, a little bit of incon inconvenient, and uh, we'll see that doing it for Python is much nicer. Okay, uh, a Python also uh, can uh, allow us to to extend the power of net expressions and uh, the power of unifiers as well. And Python can also be useful for uh, for writing custom components for simulations. So, like little simulation commands that are useful for only that particular simulator, like some scenario manager or some custom traffic generator. You usually don't really want to do these. Uh, in, in C++ because it's just too much work for that specific simulator. Okay, it can be, Python can be useful for simulation and control as well. For example, if you want to stop your simulation uh, when uh, a certain complex condition occurs, okay, like, like the simulation results have reached a certain accuracy or uh, after certain events have occurred in, in, in your simulation, something like that. It's uh, Python is powerful enough to describe such conditions. Okay, it can be also useful for automating the workflow for managing and running simulations and simulation campaigns, for getting the simulation results or for testing or some stuff like that. Uh, and of course, it's also useful for result analysis, but we have seen it in Omnet, Omnet 6 as well already. And there are some disadvantages, of, of course, like Python is not the fastest programming language, but uh, it's, this only means that you you could uh, avoid, you should probably avoid using Python in the hot parts of the simulation model. But it doesn't matter if Python code just runs once in a while during the simulation; it's not a significant slowdown. And of course, now if I say module, it can mean Python module or Omnet module, <laughs> which is slightly confusing sometimes. Okay. Uh, so what tools do we envision for this support? Uh, basically, I will just uh, list these tools and I will have quite a lengthy uh, uh, demo afterwards. So I'll just rush through the slides so that we have more time for the code. Okay, so there are two functions, PyL and PyCode for uh, uh, integrating uh, mm, Python code in the net, net expressions or in, in, in the files. There's a Python class property which lets you implement a simple module in Python. And we also provide a, a Python package which wraps the simulation kernel. So it allows you to write standalone scripts that run simulations. And this is based on the CPPYY package that I'll tell about in a little while. And Okay, we also have the, the omnetpp.scaf packages, which are for, for processing simulation results. This is used inside the IDE analysis tool, but it can also be used outside the context of the uh, IDE. And uh, we also have a package called omnetpp.simulation, which is basically for managing and running simulations in an efficient and distributed and, and whatever way. So, the pi and pi code function. So the pi eval function, it uh, um, evaluates a string as a Python expression and returns the result. And you can also have four more parameters before a, a column. And the pi code block, pi code uh, net function evaluates a Python statement block. There's a distinction between the two because Python makes, makes a dis dis distinction between expressions and statements. Uh, so in PyCode, uh, you have a, a string which contains a block of statements, and you can also have formal parameters in here. It is, for example, useful if you if you need to import something because that's a that's a separate statement. Okay, uh, we have also this Python class property. So if you put this Python class property on a simple module, it means that it's the simple module is implemented in Python. So in order to do it, you create a Python file, import the simulation library, and, and you can just simply subclass from the C++, uh, C++ uh, class, 
and write your handle message and, and initialize and other uh, other functions. But uh, if this, if you're wondering how this is done, then uh, the answer comes here. It's the C plus CppyY package. So CppyY package, it it works magic basically. It it allows you to to use and extend uh, C++ code using Python. So here's a little usage example. You import a CppyY package, and you can include a, a C++ header file. And what it does is reads the header file and parse, parses it, and it uh, remembers all the definitions from there. And and you can and makes these definitions available from Python immediately. So it makes immediately on the fly a Python wrapper for these classes. And uh, alternatively, you can uh, directly give it some, some C++ code, and it will compile that C++ code and, and parse the definitions in it and make it available in Python. So in this class, in this example, we create a class called A, and I, uh, I give it a, a method, which just prints out some string. And this class A will appear in this names under this Python package cppyy.global.a. So in this line, I just make an abbreviation. So I can just simply refer to it as A. I create an instance of this class and I can call methods on it. And it works pretty pretty well. So it can do like cross uh, like inheritance, it can do callbacks and, and C templates and, and exception handling and a lot more. And uh, Okay, the cppyy package uh, is built on top of the Kling, which is interactive C++ interpreter, which is used for experiment, used for evaluating the uh, results of uh, high energy physics uh, experiments in CERN. And that itself uh, uh, builds on Clang and LLVM. So basically, if you do this like innocent looking statement of importing cppyy it will pull in a full c++ compiler and code generator and everything okay so we have this onnet pp that runtime package which is based on cppyy and it makes the simulation library available as a python package so basically you can use the simulation library as you would program in c++ but only if you write python code so in in essence this package it just uses cppyy and includes onnet pp.h of course, it's a lot more than two lines, but this is basically the essence of it. All, all the rest is just refinements and, and, and additional nice stuff. Yes, and uh, to make this to make this package happen, Omnet, Omnet++ has also undergone recently an extensive refactoring. And basically, the Envir part of it was, uh, was uh, completely refactored to improve the reusability of the com components and the composability and, and that kind of stuff and to make it more ready for, for use in Python. And as a side project, we also did multi-thread support. So actually you can run simulations on, on multiple threads, but of course each simulation is still single threaded. Uh, you, can, you can use it from, from CMDM. There is this, this new configuration option, CMDM non-threads. And in this instance, if I run a, run a parameter study with more than eight threads, then they will use eight threads yes and uh the code of course had to be modified for that so many global variables became thread local and uh, inside simulation models if you have global variables you're probably not supposed to have global variables in simulations but nevertheless inet has quite a few global variables but they were replaced by this this new omnet method feature called get get shared variable which makes a variable scoped on this on the on the simulating on the simulation so variables uh, get created at the beginning of the simulation destroyed at the end of the simulation so values don't survive to the next simulation okay okay i've already mentioned the omnet pp.scape package for analysis and it was presented last year in the summit uh, the most useful one is the results package basically which allows you to 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 pull in omnet result files into pandas data frames directly so you don't have to to go over uh, exporting it into uh, CSV and import it, import the CSV from uh, from pandas. Yes, and there is also a, a package called omnet pp that simulation, which basically allows you to 
to run simulations and simulation campaigns in, in various various ways and various ways meaning you can have simulations on uh, multiple threads in process or or local processes or you can you can utilize uh, local computers and, and clusters for example ssh cluster we're using the dusk python package and you can do various things for it with it so like running it for getting simulation results or for various kind of tests and it has grown from the needs of the inet development and maintenance because there we often had to uh, often facing problems like okay what are the simulations that need to be tested okay or some fingerprint tests have failed some simulations have failed fingerprint tests i made some changes to the code i want to rerun the failing tests or i made some changes to the wi-fi model and i want to rerun the simulations that contain wi-fi and uh, or or i want to to, to compare the, the results to to some earlier versions in the repository uh, to to check the the operation for regression testing and oh the motivation for this package was that human time is expensive so the goals were to automate as much as possible or to assist all the to everything that that cannot be fully automated and we use store instead of recompute so if you if you run a simulation then the results are stored the fingerprint is stored so you can retrieve it later on you don't have to <clears throat> rerun all the simulations and of course you want to to utilize all available computing resources so if i run a test a full test suit and it takes one hour it doesn't make sense to sit for one hour in front of the computer if i have several more uh, boxes laying around in the office or or if i have a ssh cluster available at the university lab or something like that uh, okay now let's go to the demo uh, so first uh, I have modified the, the routing example of, of Omnet, which is basically a very simple communication network. Uh, there is just, I just have a, have a network where each node acts as a router, and it also has a local uh, traffic generator attached to it and and uh, stuff like this. So in this, let's start with this, with this uh, configuration section. Here I created uh, an, an application which uh, accepts the, the the intervals between generating packets as an array so i can show it to you uh, up to the net so instead of a single uh, package generation interval it accepts an array and the default is an empty array of interarrival times and I, i'll show you how to assign this array uh from python because if you have just a few values you can put it in the in the unified that's no problem but for example here if i want a cyclical uh generation like a 10 millisecond gap 10 millisecond gap 500 millisecond gap and i want to repeat it 100 times this is this is the python expression that 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 gives me a 300 element array and and this is auto, this python numerical array is automatically converted into an omnet array so the module can can get it okay the next one is for for generating an array field with random numbers but this uses the python python random number generator which is not very nice with omnet because with, in omnet we care about the random number seeds and so on so uh, in this next example i use the omnet random number generator this the this word actually refers to the the module itself so the app module itself so this idea use its own random number generator and this expression it looks also very innocent but it's it also relies on cppyy so i'm actually calling the exponential member function of the cpp of the c++ class of the c module c++ class and of course, I'm using list comprehension to to create to put them into an array, and I assign it to a parameter. Okay, uh, uh, this is all all used by Eva. Uh, I want to show you Py code, which is, for example, useful if I want to to use a mathematical function like okay, use use cos cosinus to to modulate these inter arrival uh, inter arrival times, uh, because this math module has has to be imported separately I, I must use pi code and return 
to to uh, to import to be able to import the module. Okay. Next one, I maybe I have a, a, a file which describes these interval times. For example, something like this. So it, it just contains some numbers separated by comma, and uh, I can write a Python code which uh, opens this file, and it uses also this comprehension to to actually fully fully read the file, split it up alongside commas and cover them to to the elements to numbers and then return it as an array and uh, okay next example i can i can actually use do it with pi evol as well the whole thing can become a whole list comprehension because the open open thing open statement also works as a function so i can just open the file read the file split up the file convert it to float and return and in this line, I show you that the, the file name doesn't have to be hard coded in here, so I can just like uh, uh, put the put it put the file name here as a formal parameter. I can specify it as the second argument, and in, the same thing works with its file code as well. So I just have file name here and put it plus. Okay, and the question arises like, what happens if I have just a little bit more python code in here because it's not not very likely that like you can write everything in one line or it, of course you can introduce multiple lines using the backslash n sequence but it's also not very convenient so the the answer is that you can write a uh, uh, python you can put your all your functions that you want to use in any files into a separate module here i created a, a python file called routing routing utils.py and uh, in here i can just import this routing utils.py as ru and i can i can use this function so it means that basically you can use conveniently use an um, arbitrarily lengthy python code in within uh, any files because you just put it into a separate file import it and then you can refer you refer to that one okay uh Let's go back here. Uh, I, I tell I told about using using Python for topology generation. So let's suppose I have uh, the network topology in a file called connections CSV. So basically, it's very simple. Uh, CSV file the columns are like source source of a link, destination of the link, and some link parameters. Here it's all the same because I was lazy, but it doesn't matter, you can imagine. And uh, uh, it uses the network code from CSV, from this, this, from, I open the net file. So in the net file, you can see that it's, it's a pretty, very normal looking net file. I have a node type, like what, what, what node type to use, and where, and uh, I have a CSV file parameter. And, uh, the the main thing here is python class which tells that uh, this module is written in python so uh, this is the python file and actually you can you can see it uses on the pp that runtime and here we just uh, subclass the standard on that c module uh, c plus c plus plus class and override this build inside function so this build inside function normally goes to the net file and takes the sub modules and connections from the net file but if we override it then we can do our own stuff here so which is right now this is to to read the uh the csv file using pandas into a data frame and then basically i can just loop through the unique names so like the all, the all the node names in here and create create these nodes one by one and then i can go through the lines of the data frame which basically uh, describe the links i take the source node destination node and here i have some some basically this is this would look exactly the same in c plus plus two nodes together using this uh, connect function but you can imagine that this connect function can be put into utility 
utility Python function and then this creating the, the links basically becomes a one-liner inside. And then uh, when I created all the links, I, I build the inside of all nodes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, a second example of topology generation is this uh, random tree, uh, which is, uh, okay, then the net file looks exactly the same. I, I, I have a parameter for the number of nodes in the random tree. And I just want to show that uh, uh, how nice Python is. Python has a package for everything. So I have this network X package, which is quite an accepted extensive package for generating all sorts of, of uh, random topologies, random graphs. So, and it has a random tree method. So I just give it the number of nodes, and I, I get back a graph in this variable g and i created a function here called build network from graph it takes the graph and builds the network from the graph it's also very simple i can create the line then all the nodes in in one line so i know how many nodes there are and i can i can create a, using this comprehension i can create uh, uh, the nodes with the appropriate name this will generate like names like RTE 0, 1, 2, and so on. Uh, and I collect the result in this nodes array. And I can go through the, the, the edges in the graph. And basically, it's the similar thing to the previous one. So I just I just connect the nodes. And then I just build the insider networks. And uh, basically, that's it. So and you can also imagine that this, 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 this part of it can become like a utility function. So it's very easy to set up an arbitrary topology using, using Python. Um, OK. Uh, another thing I wanted to, to tell you is how easy it is to create silly things like scenario managers in, in Python. Uh, scenario manager is uh, just uh, a simple module which is implemented in Python. This scenario manager is specific to, to this uh, to this simulation. Here I implemented something uh, easy that at one simulation time I want to break a link, and at the later simulation time I want to to restore a communication link in the in the network. So uh, I just schedule, create two events and schedule these two events. It's this create and schedule is just this, this Python function creates a new message and does a schedule set statement, schedule function call. And in handle message, I just check the, if it's even to one, then I enable the channel. If it's even two, I disable the channel. If it's, if it's even two, I enable the channel again. And here I have this, uh, this function, which is also uh, like looks like many lines, but it's easy to create like a set of utility functions for, for common things like like uh, disabling and enabling a communication link. So this this can also become a one liner. So you can see just, you can you can create a, a, a scenario manager for for any kind any particular scenario in something like 20, 30, 40 lines of, of Python code. Uh, Yes, and there's something else uh, I want to show you that it's it's not only possible to write uh, uh, um, Python modules from scratch, but you can also uh, uh, you can also extend existing existing models. Mm, for example, I have this. Uh, okay, let's see, maybe. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. So I show you this. Uh, this up X simple module basically extends a base module defined in app.h. And so it includes the, the header file and including it using cppiy.include makes, makes the class de definition and everything available from Python. So I can basically 
uh, subclass from it and I can insert my additional events. So this this uh, application is traffic generator. It had uh, methods for for starting, for uh, for uh, stopping, and like pausing and uh, restarting the generation of of packets. And it's it's kind of easy to to write some Python code which periodically stops and restarts generating the packets like every ten seconds. So I just create a timer scheduling and in the I overwrite handle message and if it's if it is my timer I can just toggle the generation state otherwise I call the the previous handle message and in and in in the toggle state method I call the stop and start method of the base class so this makes it very convenient to extend inet for example because inet contains a large uh, uh, lots of lots of modules and while all the, mo the modules have many parameters, but if there are chances that you can have a use case where the existing module parameters are not, not sufficient. And uh, in those cases, you can, you can write Python code to, to, to customize the particular module for your purposes. And you don't need to write C++ code. Okay, so this was one part of the demo. And the second part is, close, the second part, I want to show you is how to run uh, simulations from uh, from a Python script, like from from pure Python without using CMD and QT and things like that. Um, I, have, I have a number of scripts here. So in uh, in this first step, I just uh, run the uh, Aloha example simulation of Omnet. So the first line is loading the uh, the Aloha library because it was it was compiled as uh, as a shared library. Uh, you can see that it's uh, it's here. It's a shared library. So I load this load this shared library, uh, and uh, I parse the omnet ppini file. And it has several configurations, so I just ex extract one configuration called Purelova one from it. And I need to load the net file, so I create a net loader and then tell it to load everything from the current folder. And after that, uh, I can just create a simulation instance and set up the network given in the in the configuration, and then run the simulation. And then then basically that's it. And I can. Um, I can run it here, Python 3. OK, and it runs for something like three seconds, because in this unified configuration, the I think there was a, C, there was a CPU time limit of three seconds. Set. OK, in the six, second example show, that it's how you can run multiple simulations. So basically, what you do is uh, 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 create a for loop. So in in the Omnet PP, in it, there is a, a, a an EFI section called purely experiment, which is actually a parameter study that expands to something like forty something simulations. So I can get the number of runs in that configuration, and I can loop through them, and I can extract the the com particular configuration that belongs to this run number. And and I can run this simulation. So if I if I just do this, uh, it goes it runs all, all these forty simulations. Okay, uh, it takes a while to finish. So, but what what if I want to organize the parameter study uh, myself? Because I don't know, I want to do some something fancy that unifies don't support. Then. There's lots of ways to do it, but like one way, I took the easy path here, and I just created, put the init file here into a, a string constant, and this string constant has some empty fields, some fields in it, which will be substituted later on. So I just uh, uh, organize a nested nested for loop with the with the desired number of hosts values and desired and desired. Uh, interval time values and uh, uh, using a Python format 
uh, statement format method, I can substitute all these, these local variables, so like new host and, and the other, into the inify. So I get a, a, a string which contains already the values, and I parse part that as an init file, and I extract the configuration from that init file, and, and I can run, I can run the simulation. Yes. Uh, okay, it takes a while. So if I have many simulations, uh, then using a single single core is not a very good, not a very good idea. I can, I can make use of all simulation, all CPU cores on my machine. And for that, I can use the multiprocessing Python package, which creates a, a process pool and uses this process pool to run everything. So for this, I have an Aloha job, which does this. This is a function which performs the simulation. And this is this is a lot list of parameterizations, the simulations that I want to run. So how do I create this, this task list? Okay, I have the... Uh, possible values from numerals and interval mean, and I just create a, a Cartesian product, Cartesian product and convert it to a list. And this goes in here. And this Aloha job is just a function which, uh, which runs the Aloha simulation. And the inside of this is basically what we have already seen. It's the same Unify section. And uh, it just parses the Unify and runs the simulation. Okay, and if I start it, you can see that it executes a lot faster. In my laptop, I've got eight, eight cores, so it just finishes basically in an instant. Uh, and as a last example that I want to show, almost the last example I want to show is simulation-based optimization. So if we can run uh, run simulation, then we can we can find the the uh, a given set of input parameters to the simulation, which minimizes or maximizes some, some desired uh, output variable. And uh, um, in, Sci in Python, we have this scipy optimize.minimize function, but there are some, some more as well, but this is probably the most, most well-known one, which, can, which accepts a function to, to minimize and uh, a numerical method to, to do it. And uh, in our case, in the Aloha example, I could be interested in the optimal uh, interarrival time of packets, so generation frequency of packets for any number of hosts that produces the optimal channel utilization. Because, okay, if, if those stations generate packets uh, too often, then they, all these, all these packets will collide and channel utilization will be low. And if they generate packets like too, too, uh, too rarely, then it, that's, that's the reason that why channel utilization will be low because there will be no traffic on the channel. So between the two extremes of collisions all the time and channel empty all the time, between these two extremes, there, is, there must be an optimum. So I can use an optimization method to figure out this optimum. And uh, for that, okay, I want to use the the min the want to uh, maximize the utilization. So I need to wrap my simulation into a function which contains a, a negative sign because the Python function only minimizes. And the thing I, I invoke here, the function is basically the function that contains a simulation. So it's uh, it takes num host interarrival mean as parameters that we've already seen, and it sets up the simulation and, and, and runs the simulation. So that's the usual stuff we've already seen. But it does one more thing. It needs to extract and return the channel utilization. So how do we do that? Uh, when the simulation is set up, we install a probe that can remember the channel utilization. So I, I written a function called uh, install channel utilization probe. I, re I remember the probe here. And when the simulation is over, I uh, retrieve the channel utilization from the probe and I, I, re I can return it. And what is this channel utilization probe? 
well, there's multiple ways to, to write. This is one, one possible way. So uh, if we look at the ANOHA simulation, there's, if you have a statistic there, uh, channel utilization statistic, already re which uh, relies on a simulation signal, uh, which is either zero or one, depending on whether there is a meaningful transmission on the channel. And uh, utilization becomes the time, time average of this, of this signal. And uh, we are interested in the final value of it. So that's why we normally record the last, last value from there. And this function basically replicates that. It creates a, it uh, figures out the signal, this received signal. It creates a time average filter. It creates a last value recorder. And it, it uh, basically uh, assigns the time average filter onto the signal and uh, puts the last value recorder after the time average signal and, and returns this last value recorder. So this will act as the, the probe for, uh, for channel utilization. But there's, of course, many other ways to, to write this stuff. And it can also be, uh, uh, be made much shorter using the utility function. But there are some, some things missing from Omnet yet and from, the, from this Omnet PP but, but, uh, runtime package, but we'll make it up for later. Yes, so if I, if I run it, um, You can see that it, it runs the tons of simulations and each produces a channel utilization value. And in the end, I plot, plot the, the simulation results. You can see that the various numbers values are mixed up here. And that's why, because uh, I, can, I can run the whole thing in parallel. Okay, this, this optimization function is a single threaded, but it doesn't prevent me to from from running uh, from computing the optimum uh, for the different numbers values concurrently, I just kill it because it takes takes a while. But I can uh, I can show you the the result. Mm. So the, this this is what comes out in the end. So this is the optimal interarrival time. The interarrival time, which produces the optimum uh, channel utilization, and uh, in the last example, I have a little bit more fancy version of that. I um, basically remember the simulation simulation results from all simulation runs, I, and I plot it also as a as a as a as a scatter plot, uh, so that I can I can see which simulations the uh, the optimization function. Right. So this is the result. So you can see the same graph as before. And all dots basically represents one simulation run. So horizontal axis is number of hosts, interarrival time. So these are so for example, for this dot, it was num host was 200 and uh, interval time mean was 100. And this channel utilization corresponds to uh, to something like, I don't know, uh, 0.15 or something like that. And we can see that the utilization maximum is around 0.2. And basically, this optimization function try, tries to find these yellowish green uh, places in here and connect, connect them. OK, so I just created this as a demo. So this is actually a linear relationship. It's not very surprising, but this is just basically a demonstration. So it's not, not a serious experiment. But one thing I learned that it's, it's the simulation-based optimization is very tricky because simulations necessarily uh, provide, uh, have some accuracy, some finite accuracy. So actually the, the function that it produces is not, not smooth. It has noise on it. So, so many optimization methods which use the gradient method uh, don't work very well. They don't converge very well because, because of noise on the function. It, it cannot estimate the, the gradient properly. So it will just, just uh, not converge or stop so, too soon or something like that. So we have to, we have to find uh, an, an optimization, numerical optimization method that doesn't rely on gradients, doesn't rely on gradients that much. 
uh, so it uh, it performed better. But it was actually it was also a little bit sensitive to the to the initial value, so where you start the optimization. So yeah, so one has to be careful to do this kind of this kind of studies. Yes, so basically that was my presentations, and thank you, thank you very much for your attention. So, do you have any questions? I overstepped the time a little bit, but uh, yeah. actually, I expected that, and we we agreed that there will will create a slot somewhere in lunch time where there will be more time for for questions and answers. But I think we can we can take a few like one or two questions this time as well. So we plan these features to to be part of Omnet 7. We have to increase the major version number because there's quite a lot of uh, incompatibilities in some parts of the simulator. Not the simulation kernel, but some part, some other parts of the simulator. Maybe okay. then. Then a small question: When will the seven be expected? <laughs> yes, that's an excellent question. We plan it for early next year. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>